Welcome to this lab on getting started with the Databricks platform. This provides a hands-on review of some of the basic functionality of the Databricks data science and engineering workspace. By the end, you should be able to rename a notebook and change the default language, attach a cluster, use the percent run magic command, run Python and SQL cells, and create markdowns. First is renaming a notebook. We can do that by clicking on the name at the top of the page and editing the name. So here I'm just going to append test. And to run cells in a notebook, you have to attach a cluster cluster, which you can do with the drop down menu here and selecting the relevant cluster. If you don't have a cluster attached and you want to run a cell, for example, here we're going to just print out a string. This will prompt you to attach a cluster. So we do want to connect it to demo, so we'll leave that. And you can see that this cluster now appears over here as well. Also note that the drop down menu provides the option of starting or restarting the cluster as needed. You can also detach and reattach to a cluster with this one button. This is useful for clearing the execution state when needed. Next is using percent %run. Complex projects of any type can benefit from the ability to break them down into simpler, reusable components. When used this way, variables, functions, and code blocks become part of the current programming context. Consider this example. Say notebook A has these four commands. It defines a variable called John, and then it calls another notebook B. This notebook defines a new variable called full name based on that name variable that we declared right here. After calling this notebook, we print out the full name. Now, if we run notebook B by itself, it's gonna fail to execute because the name variable was not defined anywhere. Likewise, you might think that running notebook A would fail because it uses the variable full name, which isn't defined in notebook A. But this does in fact successfully, when you see this percent %run call here, you can think of this as copy and pasting the contents of this other notebook right here. What actually happens is that the notebooks are merged together as we see here and then executed. So we have the first two lines and instead of the run call, we have the original code in notebook B and, and then the code following that. So this provides the expected behavior. Hello, John. Welcome back, John Doe. So the folder containing this notebook has another folder called an example setup folder. And if we click here, all it does is declare a variable called my name, as well as a data frame generated with a simple range function. For this example, I'm just going to replace this with yo. So let's go back to the notebook we were just in. There's another cool feature that helps you navigate content within a notebook. This outline is automatically created based on any headers that you have at the top of a markdown cell. And we were just here. Now, if we run the cell, it's going to print out the string that we defined in the other file. Run the following cell to verify that the example setup notebook was executed by displaying the example DF data frame. This table consists of 16 rows of increasing values. Next, we're going to detach and reattach a cluster. While attaching to clusters is a fairly common task, Sometimes it's useful to detach and reattach in one single operation. The main side effect this achieves is clearing the execution state. This can be helpful when you want to test cells in isolation or you simply want to reset the execution state. So we're going to revisit the cluster dropdown here and select the detach and reattach option and click confirm. Notice that the output we have from previous cells that we ran are still here. That's because the results and execution state are unrelated. This can be verified by attempting to rerun the cell above. Since the example DF variable was cleared along with the state, this shouldn't execute properly. Next, let's create a markdown cell. So we're gonna populate it. I'll click B to create another cell below the selected cell. I'll start with the magic command percent MD to mark a markdown cell. And we're gonna add a header using the pound symbol. This is a header. Add bullet points, one bullet, two, as well as a link to the Databricks docs page. Query a Delta table using SQL. This executes a simple query against a table that's backed by a Databricks provided example data set included in all of the DBFS installations. And execute the following cell to view the underlying files backing this table. Assuming you imported this material using a Databricks repo, we can open the repo version control dialog by clicking on the published branch folder button at the top left corner of the page. And it's titled published just because that's the branch we're on. So we can see the changes made during this lab. We set this my name variable in the example setup notebook and created a markdown cell in this lab. We also have a file that was added and a file that was removed. Earlier, we changed the default language of a notebook from Python to SQL, which actually renamed the file, changing its extension from .python to .sql. 
So like we said, these are three of the changes that we made. And if you followed the lab and also modified the setup notebook, you should also have that. We can also use this dialog to revert changes by clicking over here and discarding them. This can be dangerous if you don't understand what you're doing. This is effectively erasing your changes and bringing it back to whatever current state of the branch is. Now if we scroll up here and go back to this notebook, the changes we made here are no longer here. 